hello dear learners welcome you all in my online classes uh, dear learners today we will learn about lens so let's start the topic so very first if we define a lens then simply we can say a transparent transparent refracting medium transparent refracting medium bounded by two surfaces in which at least one surface is spherical spherical means curved so is tarike se agar hum ek lens ko define kare to hum keh sakte hain lens ek transparent refracting medium hai jo ki do surfaces se bound hota hai ab उन दो सर्विसेज में कम से कम एक सर्फेस जो होना चाहिए वो स्पेरिकल शेप का होना चाहिए कर्ड शेप का होना चाहिए और दूसरा कर्ड हो भी सकता है और नहीं भी हो सकता है तो इस तरीके से अगर हम डिफरेंट सिचुएशंस को कंसीडर करते हुए मींस जो भी रिफ्रैक्टिंग मीडियम बाउंड होगा वो रिफ्रैक्टिंग मीडियम की बाउंड्रीज के शेप को कंसिडर करते हुए लेंस के टाइप्स को कंसिडर करें तो हम कह सकते हैं इन दिस वे लेंसेस आर ऑफ six kinds so let's discuss about the six kind of lenses so very first kind of lens when the first boundary is plane and the second boundary is concave type is convex type not concave type actually it is so first boundary of the right side of the refracting medium is the plane type and the second boundary of the refracting bounded medium is convex type so in this way the lens formed is called plano plano convex lens when the lens has one boundary as a plane surface and other boundary as concave surface means here right surface is plane one and left surface is in concave shape so such a lens such a bounded medium is called as this is plane so again plano right side right boundary is the plane so plano and this is concave so plano concave lens in the same in the same way by observing the two boundaries of a lens we can name the lens if the right surface as well as left surface right surface as well as left surface both are convex type then such a lens is called by convex lens biconvex lens this is a third type a fourth type if either curved surfaces are in concave shape then such a lens is called bi concave lens bi concave lens means this is first type second type third type fourth type now here look fifth type fifth type if the first surface is here from the right side first surface is convex type and second to the left side to the left side first this is convex type and from the left side this is concave type then this type of lens is called this right side convex left side concave so convex so concave convexo concave lens in case 
if the right boundary is concave and left boundary is convex here this right boundary is concave and this left boundary is convex then such a length is called concave convex concave convex lens out of these six kind of lenses the important lens means the lens which is to be discussed in our syllabus which is to be studied through our syllabus is biconvex lens and biconcave lens in biconvex and biconcave lens these two surfaces these two spherical curved surfaces may or may not have same radius of curvature but in general up to our syllabus these two lenses will have means biconvex or biconcave lens either surface is spherical surfaces of biconvex or biconcave lens will have same radius of curvature in this way will have same focal length so now let's discuss about uh, biconvex lens and biconcave lens in depth simply we call we call biconvex lens as convex lens if we are talking about convex lens then left as well as right boundary of the lens is convex so in this way such a bounded refracting medium is biconvex or simply convex lens so uh, as this uh, lens has two curved surfaces two curved spherical surfaces so corresponding to each curved surface these this lens will have two radii of curvature and two foci as uh, already we have considered that these two curved surfaces spherical surfaces are exactly similar in that case the center of curvature and focus of the first surface is exactly equal to the center of curvature and the focal length of the second surface so in this way we say this is focus this is center of curvature and half of this this is optical center very first thing uh, let's uh, define the optical center if we define optical center of a lens then simply we say that middle part midpoint midpoint of the transparent refracting medium is regarded as optical center of the lens so corresponding to this optical center the distance of the center of the spherical solid sphere from which this spherical surface is taken is the radius of curvature and half of the distance of radius of curvature is the focal length so for the first surface this uh, coordinate is and for the second surface the same thing comes out so here f and c again b k so in this way and in case of convex lens first focus is this one is the first focus and this one is the second focus but first and second focus we call when these two curved surfaces have different radius of curvature and in that case different focal length but here the radius of curvature are same so focal length is same but this one is the first principal focus and this one is the second focus so in this way you you clearly can see you can see that the first focus of convex lens is uh, is, uh, is lying right of the optical center in the same way if we talk about concave then in case of concave the same thing is there corresponding to this spherical surface as well as this we will have two center of curvature and two foci so corresponding to this here is first focus first center of center of curvature second focus and second center of curvature so this this focus is regarded as first focus in case of in case of concave lens so 
clearly the first focus in case of concave lens is lying to the left of the lens while in the case of convex lens the first focus of the lens is lying to the right of the lens remember the sign convention in sign convention we consider this optical center as origin and then compare the whole coordinate the whole thing with the cartesian coordinate system so right to the origin we say we take things positive we take distances positive left to the origin we take distances negative so in case of convex lens that this first focus is measured right to the optical center that is right to the origin that's why the focal length of the convex lens is taken positive while in case of concave the distance of means the focal length is measured to the left of the origin left of the optical center that's why this distance is taken this distance is taken negative so remember this thing for the convex lens focal length is taken positive for concave lens focal length is taken negative and if we define op uh, optical center as uh, we defined already if we define principal axis then simply we can say a straight line joining optical center and center of curvature of the lens is regarded as the principal axis after principal axis if we define center of curvature then in case of either curved surfaces the same definition will come as in case of mirror we define center of curvature for the first surface is the center of the uh, of solid sphere from which this curved surface surface is taken out the same thing for this curved surface the same thing for this and this so in this way whatever is the definition of the center of curvature and the focus as well the, uh, these definitions are same as in case of mirror if we define first focus or principal focus of a convex mirror or convex lens or concave lens then in that case we can say first focus or principal focus of a convex lens is a point on the principal axis principal axis through which a parallel beam of light after refraction through the lens passes after refraction through the lens passes in case of uh, this is th this definition is for the convex lens but for the concave lens we say principal focus or simply focus is a point on the principal axis through which parallel beam of light after refraction through a concave lens seems to come out seems to come out means if you are observing from here here then simply these two rays seems to coming out from this point so this point is regarded as focus of the concave lens so another way we can say principal focus of convex lens or concave lens is the point on the principal axis at which parallel beam of light after refraction gets converged or seems to be converged in case of convex lens gets converged in case of concave lens seems to be converged so this is the definition of the principal sorry principal focus in case of lens as con convex as well as concave now after uh, these uh, little definitions on the lens let's talk something about equation of lens as in case of mirror equation we studied lens equation is also there uh, in case of mirror we said that relation between f u and v is the 
equation is the mirror equation the same thing here relation between f u and v where f is the focal length of the lens uh, v is the distance of the image from the optical center of the lens u is the distance of object from the optical center of the lens all these so the relation between these three quantities is the is regarded as the lens equation so in case of lens this result comes out as 1 upon f means reciprocal of focal length is equal to the minus time reciprocal of the distance of object from the optical center plus reciprocal of the distance of image from the optical center so this equation is regarded as lens equation now if we talk about the magnification the same the same definition is there again magnification produced by a lens is the ratio of the ratio of the height of the image to the height of object so i over o where i is the height of the image o is the height of object simply also this uh, come if we solve uh, these uh, means if we solve by taking uh, geometry by taking help of geometry in case of image formation of the lens then it comes out that magnification m over equals i over o also equals v over u which was minus v over u in case of mirror so remember these equations means uh, in for the lens equation we have 1 upon f is equals minus 1 upon u plus 1 upon v and for the magnification simply we have i over o which is equals v over u now the last thing about the lens is to define its power and to calculate its power so let's see the power of a lens power so the last thing which is to be defined in case of lens is power of a lens so if we talk about lens then simply if a beam of light is incident on it then sometime it converges at far point and sometime it converges to a very close point where this parallel ray will get converged this is determined by power of a lens so simply the converging are diverging in case of a convex lens converging capacity in case of concave lens diverging capacity so converging or diverging capacity of a lens is regarded as power of the lens also power of a lens is measured by the angle through which refracted ray gets deviated corresponding to the incident ray here corresponding to this uh, this is the incident ray corresponding to this this is the corresponding to this ray this ray this is the deviation this is the deviation produced by the lens and corresponding to this ray this is the deviation produced by the lens so this is the deviation actually and this deviation is the measure of the power the larger the deviation means larger the deviation of the refracted ray corresponding to the incident ray larger the power of the lens and now the thing to be to be noted is that if the deviation is large if the deviation is large in that case this means the point where parallel beam gets converged is the focal length of the is the focus of the lens and the distance of this focus from the optical center is regarded as focal length so the thing to be noted is that when delta is greater means power is greater in that case f focal length is shorter this much and when delta is smaller in that case focal length is larger so whatever is the relation we get uh, between uh, deviation produced by a lens which is power of a lens with focal length of the lens is that power or deviation is inversely proportional to the focal length of the lens means greater the focal length larger the power larger the deviation produced and vice versa so in this way 
we again we can define uh, in other words we can define power of a lens as the reciprocal of the focal length of the lens but the primary definition of the power is the converging or diverging capacity or the angle of deviation produced by the lens means angle between refracted ray and incident ray this is the measure this measure is the power of the lens uh, also this is the definition of the power of a lens here if f is in meter then power comes in the unit meter inverse and the meter inverse is regarded as diopter d i o p t e r meter inverse is regarded as diopter so in this way the si unit of power is diopter abbreviated as capital d so if f is in meter f is in meter then power is 1 upon f diopter in case f is in centimeter then we write power is equals 100 upon f f is in centimeter 100 upon f diopter so this is the thing to be noted now let's see image formation for the convex lens as well as concave lens. As in case of uh, mirror, in case of concave mirror, we got six different cases of the object corresponding to which at six different position final image was formed. The same thing is here in case of convex lens. In case of convex lens, corresponding to different positions of the object we get different positions of the image also the quality of the image changes means uh, sometimes it is diminished sometimes it is uh, lesser in size all these things so here we are not going to take all six cases we are not going to trace a ray diagram for all six cases but two to three cases we are going to consider and uh, in the similar way, in the similar similar fashion, you can also draw the ray diagram for the remaining cases. So let's first of all let's take converging lens that is convex lens. So let's draw the ray diagram for the convex lens. Here, as uh, I told you, for the both cases, as uh, both uh, spherical surfaces are similar. So in this way. We will have only C and F, not F1, C1, F2, C2, C and F, C and F. Means uh, center of curvature, focus, center of curvature, focus. Because, because uh, these two curved surfaces are exactly similar. So suppose any object AB, any object AB is lying between C and F. I am not taking all cases as I told you. I am taking few of cases out of six. So suppose uh, in, in a case object object AB object AB is in between C and F so in order to get the ray diagram what we will do actually we will take two rays first parallel to the principal axis and you all know ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through the focal length of the lens and second oblique to the principal axis oblique ray can be considered in any fashion in any way for example, you can consider ray passing through the optical center, this, so here these two rays, these two refracted rays where meet each other, that point is point of image formation. So the inverted image A dash, B dash of object AB is obtained. Clearly in this ray diagram you can see that the size of image A dash B dash is greater than the size of object AB. So the image is magnified, the image is inverted as the image is formed by real intersection of refracted ray. So image is real as well. Another kind of ray, if you are not considering this oblique ray, then you can consider another type of ray which is like this, means oblique ray passing through the focus after refraction we come parallel to the principal axis to the principal axis so again these two rays meets at the 
same point so any two ray in which one first one is parallel to the principal axis and second one is oblique to the principal axis you can consider and after refraction where they meet are they seems to meet that point is called point of image formation so in this way you can sketch ray diagram of all the remaining six or five type five cases now let's uh, uh, take an example of concave lens as in case of convex mirror irrespective to the position of object image is always formed in between optical center and sorry in between pole and focus here the same thing is irrespective to the position of irrespective to the position of object image is always formed in between o and f suppose here object is at center of curvature of the concave lens so for the ray diagram the same concept is we will consider two rays first parallel to the principal axis parallel to the principal axis this ray when gets diverges then it seems that this ray is coming from focus so this ray seems to converge at f this parallel ray seems to converge at f and the second oblique ray which is passing through the optical center passes undeviated so in this way here these two ray, rays intersect so this is the point of image formation so if the object is AB then its image A dash B dash is obtained clearly in the ray diagram you can see that corresponding with respect to the object AB the image A dash B dash is erect the image A dash B dash is not obtained by the actual intersection of the refracted ray but the extended path of the refracted ray so this is the virtual path of this refracted ray this in this way a dash b dash is a virtual image it means a dash b dash never ever can be obtained on the screen so this is all about the image formation